everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen with another tasty video for you. Today we are going to be making bread. Now, earlier on this channel, we have made bread. It was a no yeast bread. This one, however, does incorporate yeast and it makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to lie, for the longest time, I was hesitant and, shall we say, afraid of trying this because I'm like, it's too complicated, or what if it doesn't work? Well, you know what? I had a little talk with my fear, and I said, you know what? You go take the day off, you know, take a vacation day, you know, come back to work next week, you know, your job will still be here waiting for you. So my fear went on a, a three-day weekend. Uh, and I decided to make some bread and it worked and it's awesome and I can't wait to show you the recipe. It's really, really simple. However, there is a caveat. It takes time. <laughs> However, most of that time, you're not doing anything. You're just waiting. So if you want to do other things, that's fine. Um, other than that, it's really, really quite simple. Very basic ingredients and it is versatile. Not only have I made a standard sort of sandwich loaf with this bread, I've also gone steps further and I've made braided bread loaves, which came out really, really good. Uh, if we have time, I'm going to go into how to work on that as well. It's very simple and I am delighted. It makes a really nice sort of squishy loaf and it's delicious, it's simple, and you can tweak it hither, thither, and yon. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hello again. All right, so I have my ingredients all set to go. Like I said, very, very basic. So, first things first, you're going to need about a cup and a third of warm to hot water. Not too hot, otherwise you will kill the yeast. Not too cold, otherwise your yeast will not activate. So, basically I just, you know, with my with my tap, I just went, you know, on the hot setting. And, you know, it's, it's reasonably warm for, you know, say, a bath. Um, so that is one and one third cups of warm, hot-ish water. And one package of active dry yeast. Now, if you don't have the packs, you can use the stuff in the jar, uh, about two teaspoons-ish. So get this in here. And then we need to feed the yeast. So you're gonna need, where is my teaspoon? You're going to need uh, two teaspoons of sugar. Now, I just use regular granulated sugar. You could use brown sugar, you could use honey, but yeah, we need to feed the yeast. Get it going, and then give it a good stir. Gonna use a fork here. All right, very nice. Okay, now you could wait for this to start sort of poofing and foaming and activating and frothing. And so, if you are unsure if your if your yeast is still alive, if you will, uh, was just laying dormant, you could wait for a bit. Uh, to make sure that it starts to bubble and raise to the surface. I've made this this particular recipe already four times, and generally I never waited, and generally I never had any issues or, you know, problems whatsoever. But, um, you know what? I'm going to wait for just a moment, and we're going to see, is this going to start to poof a little bit, uh, so that you can get a, a good visual on that. Um, I did, when I first, 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 first made this recipe, I wasn't sure if my yeast was too old or not, and I just forged ahead, and I didn't have any issues. Um, 
you know, the, the expiration date was still good, but you never know. Um, now, so we used, uh, it was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, so this is uh, active dry yeast. Now there's also instant yeast. I've never used that before, so I can't vouch as far as what is the same, what is different. I'm still learning a lot. What can I say? <laughs> um, so let's see. Is it going to start doing its thing? I haven't really noticed any change yet. I mean, there's a couple of bubbles on the surface. And it looks like a couple of little bits have floated to the surface, but nothing major yet. Oh, it's starting to go right here. Yep. See, it's, it's starting, it's starting to foof. I don't know if you can see, hang on. It's very tricky. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that very well, but yeah, it's starting to uh, sort of foof on the surface a little bit. If you'll have to excuse my weird camera work here. So it has started to show, yes, it is alive. So we're gonna add some more ingredients and then we're gonna get our dough together. All right, so since we know that our, our yeast is active, I'm going to get rid of the sugar. Don't need that. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. I'm not using regular table salt. Me, I'm using fine sea salt. Any sort of fine salt should do. Now I'm gonna do this over the sink. Bear with me. Because I don't want too much to go into my bowl. There we go. Alright, so one teaspoon of fine salt. And then one egg. There we are. And then give this a slight mix. So we have sort of a, a slurry. And then the flour. Now, the, uh, the flour that we're gonna be using is an all-purpose. I imagine that you could use bread flour or wheat flour. I haven't tried those yet. I'm gonna be using all-purpose, and you're gonna need approximately about three, three and a half, even four cups of flour. Now, based on your location, based on your humidity, etc., etc., you may need more, you may need less. It's really more about the, the texture of the dough as opposed to an exact measurement. So we're gonna go one cup at a time and gonna mix, mix, mix. Now, if you have a stand mixer with a, a bread hook, more power to you. However, you really don't need it. Um, this, this is not at all difficult by any means. Like I said, this is, this will make the fifth time <laughs> that I've made this recipe. And it is really, really, really simple. It is not what I would call hard on the hands. Okay, so that was one cup. Trying to incorporate everything. And then we will get our second cup ready. It's starting to get a little bit thicker, but it is nowhere near where we need it to be just yet. We're getting there. You know, you, you can't need this. 
you know, this might be fine for, you know, like a drop biscuit, but not where we're going. You'll see. Okay, and then cup number three. Okay. Now at this point, it is going to start to really come together and become what is referred to as a shaggy dough. Yep, see, coming nicely together. Okay, so at this point, now it's a matter of adding a little flour at a time to this so that it's not quite so sticky and we can start to, you know, do the kneading process. Now, I'm a little bit unorthodox. I like to knead it in the bowl so that I don't have to deal with the rest of my countertop getting all in a kerfuffle. Um, so that is what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be adding a little bit of flour at a time. Now, before I do that, I'm going to turn my oven on at 350, but I'm not going to let it heat up all the way. No, I am just going to let it be on for about two minutes. It's not even going to get to the full preheat. You know, turning on my oven for about two minutes that way the oven is going to make a perfect environment for my dough to do what they call proofing, which is the sort of rising poofing action that we're going to need in just a little bit. So going to keep this on for just a little bit longer and I'm going to get an additional cup of flour ready because I'm going to need it. go. And so we are going to continue working on our dough and I'm going to have to turn the oven off. So just give me one moment. All right. So I was sure to turn off my oven and now we're going to continue on with the dough. And yes, this part gets a little bit messy, but certainly not as messy as if you are going to be doing this on your countertop which you can do if that's your thing, by all means. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a sprinkle on top, try to get underneath a little bit. Yeah, this is super sticky. Just a little bit. And we're going to start to knead this a bit by hand. So basically you're just sort of folding it over and then turning it and then folding and squishing it and turning it and squishing it and turning it and squishing it. You know, I mean, there's no, personally, I would say there's no exact science when it comes to kneading dough. And now I'm sure that there are plenty of people that would beg to differ with me, um, but you want to do this for a bit to get those, you know, as they call them, the strands of gluten going. Um, and when it starts to get too sticky, well, just add some more flour. But you don't want to add too terribly much flour. Otherwise, you will dry out your dough, and then you have to add more water. It's 
much easier to add flour than adding water, in my opinion. It's sort of like adding, you know, when you're making pink and you add too much red, if you, you could just keep adding white <laughs> and you will be there forever. So, all right, yes, too sticky, more flour on the bottom. Ah, and more flour on top. Just a nice healthy sprinkle. And also, another thing that you're going to want to have is a clean towel on hand. Same towels that I used for when I made my farmer's cheese. So you're going to want to do this for a bit until your dough has a nice, smooth, even consistency. You want to work all that flour in. Okay, getting a little sticky. Okay. So at this point, yeah, I've used about a total of three and a half cups, but you know, like I said, you may need more, you may need less. So just sort of smush and turn smush and turn. And then once it starts to stick to your hands a little too much, well then yeah, you add just a little bit more flour. Also, I have another bowl. It is a ceramic bowl. I don't want to put this in the oven because um, it's plastic, but you know, I have another bowl that's also ready to go. And I also have some cooking spray. You can use oil. I would suggest if you are, if you are going to use oil, I would suggest not to use an olive oil because that has a very distinctive flavor. I would suggest perhaps a, a vegetable oil. And you are going to need that for your bowl. Otherwise, <laughs> it will stick. <laughs> I, I speaketh from experience. Yes, I do. And the last thing that you want is to have one horrifically sticky mess after your dough has proofed. Okay, I think that our dough is just about there, actually. Which is very nice. Something very therapeutic about this. You know, it's like working with Play Doh or kinetic sand. All right, you know what? I think, I think we're good for the most part. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, okay, you know what? Yes, we are almost there, but it's still, ooh, just a wee bit sticky. For my liking. So just gonna add just a little, a little bit, a little bit more flour and then we'll be good. Bear with me. Okay. 
Oh, this feels so lovely. Now, for those of you that are like, yeah, but why don't you use a bread machine? Well, to me, that is legitimate, but it's kind of like a crock pot. You set it, you forget it, and you don't get a true appreciation of just how beautiful this is. And so I think we are finally at that golden stage. Um, and so now I'm going to wash my little hands real quick. And we're gonna get our bowl ready for proofing. Which is very, very simple. Okay, set you over here. So nice ceramic bowl here. And I just have some basic cooking spray, nothing, nothing too schmancy. I'm gonna spray this over the sink. There we go. Yeah, you want to have this greased. <laughs> I can't stress that enough. All right, and then pop this right in the center of your bowl, and then give it a slight spray on top as well. Now, I don't know if that's entirely necessary, but I have found that it does help. Okay, now with your clean towel, just sort of drape this on top and I'm gonna stick this in my oven, which is off, I can't stress that enough. So I'm gonna stick that in the oven for about an hour or until the dough decides to double up in size. So I'm gonna set my timer. Clear, hang on. Okay, so my timer is going. It will be going for about an hour for it to get nice and puffy and raise up. And in the meantime, I can clean up the rest of this mess. <laughs> so I will see you in a bit when our dough has poofed. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. All right, so my dough has been in the oven now for about an hour in the turned off oven. <laughs> Gotta stress that point, otherwise you're gonna end up pre-baking. So let's take a look. Ooh, oh my. Okay, so I can tell already that this has risen a lot, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> It's the blob. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Look at all of this scrummy looking dough. All right. So for right now, I'm going to do a basic sandwich loaf. So right here, I have a five by nine pan. Well, approximately. It's just a simple loaf pan. I already sprayed it with my cooking spray. Very important. And right now we're going to basically punch down the dough to get out some of the extra gas and air and so forth. Now, before I do that though, as a precaution, I'm gonna spray my hands just a little bit so that this will not grease, <laughs> you know, uh, this, sorry, will not stick quite so bad. So we're just going to punch this down. Actually, the top of the surface really is not that sticky. So. A lot of that excess air out and the bottom definitely a bit sticky but we are prepared and because we greased our bowl -da! all right now I'm going to quite simply form this into a sort of loaf shape um, you know, and if you have any creases, you want those to be at the bottom. You want the top to be nice and 
smooth. So I'm just going to sort of fold over, fold over, fold over, fold over, so that all the little creasy bits are going to be at the top. And then we're going to flip it over. Doesn't that look pretty? So very pretty. So I'm going to pop this into, <laughs> pop this right in here and just spread it out just a little bit. You don't have to go crazy or nothing. Okay. Voila. Now, desperately need to wash my hands. Hang on one moment. Okay, so now I'm going to do the the second proofing inside of the oven, which I haven't done anything with the oven. I'm going to cover this back up and pop this in the oven for about another half an hour until the dough has risen to uh, about level with the the edge here, if not more so. So that is really, that's all we're going to be doing. So open you up, pop you in, arrange the towel so it's nice and loose, and there you go. So I will see you in about half an hour. All righty. Alrighty, so the bread has been proofing for the second time in the unheated oven uh, for about 30 minutes. Gonna take it out and see what we got. Oh, believe it or not, this actually smells really good at the moment. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to preheat my oven to 350. And while that's preheating, let's see what we got here. Hopefully it didn't stick to the towel. Oh, this is gorgeous. Look how much it rose. And it will rise a little bit more actually while it's baking, but isn't this gorgeous? So yeah, it has definitely come a long way. This is going to be so gorgeous. Now, if you want a, a plain, plain loaf, leave it. <laughs> Don't touch it. Don't punch it down again. Just leave it. Um, one alternative that I did think might be good is if you take a, a bit of egg yolk and whisk that up a little bit with just a, a hint of water and then brush this on top then maybe sprinkle on some sesame seeds or something like that. That would actually be really cool. This I'm just gonna leave as a, a plain standard sandwich bread loaf. And so basically in a nutshell, once my oven is done preheating to 350, I'm gonna stick this in there for about 30 minutes until it has a, a slightly golden brown hue to it. And then we will pop it out and continue on from there. So I will see you in about 30 minutes. All right, see you in a bit. All right, my dears, so now it is for the moment of truth. My, my loaf has been baking for about 30 minutes at 350, and we are ready to see what there is to see. All right. And we have ourselves a rather lovely loaf of bread. Now, it is not as dark as, you know, some others, but that's because we didn't add the egg wash on top. It's totally fine in my book. Yeah, you know, we're, we're not going for glamour shots here. And we'll give it a little wrap. Yes. Very nice. Okay. You know, that way you know it's done. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do now 
is actually I'm going to let this sit in the pan for about 15 minutes or so. Let it get itself situated. Then I'm going to take a butter knife and run it around the, the edges there, tilt it, set it out on my cooling rack here for, mm, I want to say it's probably going to be, you know, at least an hour. You want to wait for it to reach room temperature. You don't want it to be hot when you cut it. Otherwise, it gets funky. It gets a little gummy. So you want to wait for it to get nice and cool and room temperature before actually cutting it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for, like I said, about 15 minutes, go around the, the perimeter with the butter knife, pop it out, let it cool for, you know, at least an hour, and then, and then we will do the taste test. So I will see you when we're good to go. Alrighty. All right, my dears, so now for the final taste test. I'm really excited. Uh, I left it to cool for over an hour, uh, get it to room temperature, and this is the result. I'm so excited, I am. This looks awesome. And I already buttered up one of the pieces. This is gonna be great. Now, as you can see, the bread has some really good height to it and it's got squoosh. Yes, it has a lot of the little air bubbles in there, uh, which you get from the yeast. And this is awesome. So I already sliced up and buttered up a piece. I can't wait. Oh my God. This is so good, so very good. And just, just butter, just butter with this is awesome. It's light, it's fluffy. Mm. Mm. So very good. Now, <clears throat> From experience, I have found that if you, after it has completely cooled, if you wrap it up nice and tightly in some plastic wrap and then stick it in the fridge, it's even better the next day because it even slices that much easier. Um, and it's great for sandwiches or seriously, what have you. Um, and it is so easy. Even I can do it. And I encourage you to try it as well. Indeed, I do. Now, um, what I do plan on doing is with this same bread recipe, I would like to show you in, I'm thinking of another video, what I would like to do is show you how you can take the same exact dough and do some different things with it. I'd like to go into that as well. But Right now, for the sake of this video, I wanted to show you a nice basic sandwich loaf, and this absolutely love. Also, you can freeze it. Yes, after you bake it, slice it, you can stick it in the freezer. It's totally fine. I had some toast just last night, and it was great, okay? <laughs> so, this, I would totally recommend giving it a try. It's a lot of fun. It is really easy, and it takes a while, but again, most of that time, you're not actually doing anything. It's almost like a crock pot. You set it and you forget it. You know, you don't have to worry. Um, other than that, it's great. So as far as breaking down the time, okay, it takes, I want to say, mm, roughly maybe 10 minutes to make up the dough, if that, okay. And then an hour for the first proofing. Uh, and then another half hour for the second proofing, and then another half an hour for the baking. So you're talking just prep alone, okay. You know, a little bit over two hours, and then about another hour for the, 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 the final cool down. So if you have the time, roughly speaking, about three hours or so, 
I would totally recommend doing this. I mean, this is, as I said, this is like my fifth loaf and I am in love with the process. And yeah, I have a bread machine in my garage, but I like doing this. Uh, to me, it just seems more honest. And I, I love getting in there and, you know, kneading the dough and I absolutely love it. Now, if you're looking for a more basic, simple route, I'm going to put a link to the other video I did on the no yeast dough, which is a lot quicker, but it's so much less satisfying because this, this is satisfying. I just, it's just so good. It is. It is so good. And I would also like to try doing this recipe with an actual honest-to-goodness bread flour and see what the difference is. Maybe in the next video when we go into braiding techniques and so forth, which is a lot of fun. So listen, everybody. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I certainly did, and I will continue to enjoy the the rewards of my, my labors. Um, if you like the video, give a little thumbs up button down below because you know that I appreciate your appreciation as always. And stay tuned for more because whether I'm baking, cooking, audiobook narrations, crocheting, knitting, hey, I'm, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. What can I say? We have fun here. Yes, and I want you to have fun too. So you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, Stay making fabulous things in the kitchen and stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now everybody and have a great day.